One of the biggest questions surrounding the Braves lineup is getting answered as the Grapefruit League slash World Baseball Classic exhibition play continues. As for the question facing the rotation, that remains up in the air. In for another BPTV, Corey McCartney and Grant McCauley with you as always. And Grant, let's start with an installment of the search for a fifth starter, which in my opinion may be the worst of the Indiana Jones titles to date. We know Mike Sirocco won't be ready for opening day. Colby Allard is starting the season on the injured list, leaving the candidates down to two players who have big league experience with Ian Anderson and Bryce Elder along with prospects Dylan Dodd and Jared Schuster. Grant, how are we handicapping things with just less than three weeks before opening day? Well, I do think it's worth saying a lot can happen in these three weeks, and uh, somebody could show a lot in these next three weeks to really earn the first opportunity. But I don't know, Corey, if we're going to see by the end of spring training the final candidate who gets to hold on to that spot in rotation all year long. As we've talked about, you know, the Braves used 11 starting pitchers last year. You know they're not just going to be able to get through the season with five. Nobody can. But I do think they have the depth to be able to address this, even with some of the guys that you're not going to have at, on opening day, whether that's Michael Soroka, whether that's Colby Allard. I think Colby was a little bit of a long shot anyway. But regardless, you want to have those layers of depth, but you really need to see something from Ian Anderson. You'd love to see Bryce Elder kind of pick up where he left off at the end of last season because he was certainly useful. It's just hard to call it at this moment. But if I had to go you know, just one way or another, as far as experience is concerned, and of course the age as well, it's really hard to think that somebody's going to be able to leapfrog Ian Anderson just based on what we're seeing right now. But again, a lot could happen in several spring training starts for several different pitchers between now and opening day. I will say the overall line for Anderson hasn't been great, giving up those two bombs and four runs against the Twins. He bounced back with five strikeouts against the Yankees, though he still wasn't exactly sharp there, walking two uh, in two and a third innings. Anderson working on that new slider to use against righties, I think that could be obviously a nice addition for him to get away from being that two-pitch pitcher. Obviously, he has a track record, maybe the biggest upside, if he can ever get back to postseason, Ian Anderson. But yeah. it feels like he's leaving the door open. I mean, Schuster, the Braves' top prospect, he has five scoreless innings so far of one hit and two outings Dylan Dodd looked great until he ran up against that star set of Dominican Republic team uh, the kids have been more than all right but I, I honestly like I'm with you here I'd be very surprised if it's not Anderson or Bryce Elder and I think with Elder I mean it feels like times hasn't he kind of been the forgotten man in this whole conversation we were centering everything around Anderson and Michael Soroka and all of our conversation going into the spring but Elder, who had a 1.65 ERA over his last five starts last year, uh, obviously, albeit against some subpar offenses, he could be the guy. Yeah, I, I don't know that it's necessarily been a very impressive spring for Elder, but I think his name is worth continuing to mention. I mean, he started against the, or he piggybacked rather, with Spencer Strider against the Blue Jays on Thursday. A couple of more runs, another home run. The start of his spring was a really rough when the first four men reached in a grand slam home run is not exactly the way you want to open grapefruit league play, particularly when, as we like to say, don't worry about the stats. Like how did these guys look? But when you're competing for a job, I think it's all kind of out there on the table. All right. Not only how did he look, but how effective was he against some of these lineups, which you also have to throw the caveat out there that, yeah, maybe spring training, you may be working on things. You may be trying to get yourself, you know, ramped up and, you know, build the endurance that you'll need to get across five, six, seven innings as a starting pitcher. You're also not facing everybody's opening day starting lineup either. So when you have a kind of a clunker of sorts, there's a lot of different ways I guess you could look at it. But no, you shouldn't forget about Bryce Elder and this whole thing. And no, you shouldn't you know decide which one of these pitchers has the most upside in their career based off their spring training starts. What I did see from Ian Anderson in the second outing was a lot more swing and miss. And that, I think, has been the thing that's been holding him back. And really, you know, if you look at his stat line last year and try to figure out why he was getting hit so much harder, he was not striking out batters at the same rate he was in 2020 or 2021, and certainly not the way he was in the postseason. So adding that slider and also improving his mechanics, he wanted repeatability of the same release point for all of his pitches. He has a changeup that can break one way, a slider that can break another way. He can keep the curveball in his back pocket, but fastball command continues to be the number one thing. If he's getting ahead of hitters, he has the weapons to put him away. I think we saw that in the second start. Now we need to see a little bit more of that from Ian Anderson throughout the remainder of spring training if he wants to get that first crack at reclaiming his spot in the rotation. Certainly, I agree with you. This is Anderson's uh, to lose, at least it feels like uh, at this point. But obviously, we have some weeks to go before that's going to be sorted out. Yeah. Meanwhile, former Braves shortstop Dansby Swanson, who used to be kind of a deal in these parts, is acclimating himself to Cubs fans and media. Uh, the bid to follow him up at shortstop appears to be coming into focus, though. 
Despite the occasional miscue, Vaughn Grissom has looked the part in the field where he's vying to play the position for the first time in the big league after Manning second base a year ago. At the plate, he's been just fine. Thank you very much, including a three-hit day against the Twins and in great fruit league play has struck out just once. He's certainly aided by Orlando RC his struggles. He has just one hit so far. I think it would be a horrible look, as I mentioned before, Grant, watching Swanson leave for the Windy City to have Arcia or a stopgap free agent play shortstop on opening day. It feels like it's Grissom's to lose, and it doesn't look like he's losing that opening day assignment. Yeah, I was discussing this on Twitter on Thursday. I mean, there's never really been a scenario where Orlando Arcia winning this job could be looked at as ideal, and I, I still think that's the case. I mean, he is a useful reserve infielder that you could press into duty for a couple of weeks. You're happy to have him, maybe a little bit longer. If somebody gets injured, it's nice to have that level of depth. But when you look at upside, and I think you look at pure impact ability and, and projectability, Von Grissom has a far more of both of those things. We kind of know who Orlando Arcia is, and what he is, again, is a useful reserve infielder who can be pressed into everyday duty if you need to do that. But for Grissom, he continues to show, I think, a, a very advanced approach at the plate for his age, especially. He does not strike out a lot. He does make good contact. Can he make solid, consistently hard contact? It's kind of been a little bit of a question mark, at least for me. But in the field, I mean, I'm not going to get all over him for a couple of miscues. I mean, this is going to be an adjustment. And when I talked to Ron Washington back at Braves Fan Fest, he said, Patience is going to have to be part of the equation here with Vaughn Grissom. It didn't happen overnight for any of the infielders that Wash has worked with over his storied coaching career. And he's a guy that knows a little bit about what it takes to make the adjustment and perhaps step up and take that, that next level in your career, reach that next level, which is exactly what Vaughn Grissom's trying to do. So I think he's done a pretty good job of kind of slowing the game down and quieting the noise around him and uh, all the speculation that folks like you and me and so many others and the fans uh, across Braves country are certainly asking themselves, can Vaughn Grissom step up? I think he's looking at more as the opportunity to win a job and then go out there and show what he's capable of doing. So, you know, opening day, I would be surprised if there's short, if the shortstop out there with that Braves lineup is anybody other than Vaughn Grissom. And it's not because he's just lit the world on fire in spring training, but it's because there's so much upside there. And he has certainly played well enough to earn that first opportunity. You can always come back and reassess at some point if you have to, if you're Alex Anthopoulos. I think it's definitely worth noting, by the way, that Braden Shoemake, the former first round pick, number six prospect in the system, is having himself a pretty nice spring as well. A 25 yep. year old who's in camp for the fourth time has been very good getting rave reviews from Brian Snaker. The bat hasn't necessarily materialized so far at AAA, but I think if Grissom falters as the season goes on, I think, uh, Grant, he could make a lot of sense as an internal option. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think that we might have seen a very different second half call up last year had Braden Shoemake not torn a ligament in his knee and been out for the year and that you know changed the Braves plan. So they dipped down to double A and brought Von Grissom up in the loss of Orlando Arcia, who we thought might be out for the season. Fortunately was not, but with Ozzy Albies already out. So your your layers of depth are going to be important. It was a second base last year. It could be shortstop this year in that same regard. But you know, the things that you see about Shoemake is, I mean, he works hard. I think he's a, a good enough defender that he could play the position if you need him to. But there are questions around the bat. He does make consistent contact as well. I think he's somebody that could profile as, you know, a bit more if he's able to kind of tap into some game power. But you know, again, you may see these names circulating if there is a struggle at that position and you got to figure something out. And if you're Braden Shoemake coming to camp and a year after an injury might have cost you your first taste of the big leagues, I would imagine there's a little bit of uh, extra pep in your step, if you want to call it that, a little added motivation to make sure that you're not the forgotten man again in 2023. So we know Arcia has a role here regardless. And as we look to the final spots on that bench, I mean, things are getting very interesting with Eli White, Sam Hilliard, Kevin Pillar, uh, the injured Jordan Luplo, all competing for really two spots. Been a very interesting part of the camp. Eli White, we know that he has speed, he has defense. I think the bat may be coming around, which yeah. is an eye-opening development there. Yeah, a good, I think, adjustment to the swing is what Eli White's been talking about in spring training thus far in games. I mean, that's shown up that he is getting some results. He can run the base as well. He can run them down in the outfield. I think that's why the Braves were so excited about when you look for reserve outfielders that could give you that defensive component. That's something that, I mean, Adam Duvall had a serious power bat, but he was also a nice defender. It made him useful for a number of years. I'm not saying Eli White's going to jump into that kind of playing time, but as you try to figure out perhaps a platoon partner on some days for Eddie Rosario, who figures to get the bulk of the time in the left field, Eli White's making a case. Sam Hilliard, though also a left-hand hitter, is making himself quite a case. I mean, he's hitting over 400 thus far this spring. He's knocked in five runs. He's got four extra base hits. He went deep on Thursday. 
looking like a hitter that the Braves should be excited about having in their camp. We haven't seen Jordan Luplo yet because of the oblique issue, so I'm starting to wonder as we you know, start ticking off the days here in the month of March if he's going to have adequate time to be ready for opening day. So that's another question, Mark. And then Kevin Pillar has come in on a minor league deal, so he, I think, knew that there's a good possibility he could end up in AAA if he doesn't make this club, and hopefully he's all right with that. But you know, he's also had, a, at times this spring, shown exactly what you would hope to see from the veteran outfielder with a little bit of power. Pretty good defense, good base runner, just a solid baseball player. And the Braves, they didn't throw a whole bunch of money at left field because they already had a lot of money tied up in it, but they did bring in a lot of options. And I think that that's something that's going to help them in the bench and could help them over the course of a long season to make sure that they've got guys on the ready when injuries pop up or inconsistency because both of those things are going to happen. Yeah, we know Pilar has a track record with Alex Anthopoulos, who drafted him back when he was at the Blue Jays. Brian Snicker has talked glowingly about Pilar in the past, so he's obviously a factor here as yep. well, as you mentioned. The March through, well, March continues, and we've got you covered here on BP TV. Make sure that you subscribe, turn on notifications, and please tell a friend. We cannot make this thing grow without your help. Until next time, I'm Corey McCartney. He's Grant McCauley, and we'll see you soon, Braves Country.